Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the DFO Fantasy Podcast Morning Report for Wednesday, November the 8th. The DFO Fantasy Podcast is presented to you by Betway. If you're going to place a bet bet on Betway, please play responsibly. Ontario only must be 19 years of age or older. Let's dive right in. We have a 10-game slate to review from last night. We'll go over all of the fantasy notable performances, and we'll also preview tonight's three-game slate. So let's get things started with the Montreal Canadiens, who hosted the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning won 5-3 as minus 124 road favorites. The Lightning, uh, top six, absolutely dominated in this game. Nikita Kucherov scored almost immediately, finished the game with one goal, one assist, six shots, and now has 11 points. Four goals, seven assists in his last three games. Kudrow has been a man possessed as of late. Currently leads the NHL with 22 points in 13 games. Looking like one of the biggest steals in fantasy early on. Nick Paul should be picked up on waivers. He's just 36% owned. He continues to skate with Steven Stamkos at 5v5. And on that top power play unit, he scored two goals, including a power play goal last night. He now has seven goals in 13 games this season and is among the NHL leaders in power play goals so far. So, so long as he's playing on that top power play unit, which has been absolutely lethal to start the season, then I believe Nick Paul should be rostered in standard formats. Steven Stamkos, Victor Hedman, and Brandon Hagel each had two assists in the win. Jake Allen, who's been mostly pretty good so far this season, uh, was not very good last night. He was yanked after allowing four goals on nine shots. Nick Suzuki stayed hot in the loss, scoring his fourth of the season. He now has seven points, four goals, three assists in his last six games. The Carolina Hurricanes escaped with an overtime win as minus 217 home favorites over the Buffalo Sabres last night. Sebastian Ajo set up Martin Etchas for the overtime winner. Ajo finished the game with two assists and is now at a point per game with two goals, eight assists, 10 points in 10 games. With Frederick Anderson out indefinitely with a blood clotting issue, Antti Ranta got the start. Pieter Kachekov was recalled from the HL to serve as his backup. Both are solid waiver wire pickups at the moment. But Ranta stopped 20 of 22 shots for the win, and after a tough start to the season, he is on a three-game winning streak with a 165 goals against average and 925 save percentage. Alex Tuck, who was recently reunited on the top line with Tage Thompson and Jeff Skinner, is starting to heat up. He now has nine points, four goals, five assists in his last seven games. The New York Rangers hosted the Detroit Red Wings and were minus 144 favorites. Despite being without Igor Shesterkin, Adam Fox, and Philip Heidel, they pulled out a 5-3 victory. It wasn't as close as the final stat line might suggest. The Rangers sprinted out to a 5-0 lead before surrendering three goals in the third period. Artemi Panarin remained red hot with one goal and one assist. He's now third in the NHL with 20 points, seven goals, 13 assists in 12 games. Also looking like one of the biggest steals in fantasy early on this season. Vincent Trocek, who was promoted to the second line with Philip Heidel out, had two goals, including a power play goal on three shots. Eric Gustafson, 20% owned, has seen increased usage, including time on the top power play unit with Adam Fox out. He had another two assists last night. He has four points, one goal, three assists in his last two games. Definite must pick up if you need help on the blue line while Adam Fox is out. Billy Huso struggle continued as he's allowed three plus goals for eight in eight games out of nine starts so far this season. He's got a pretty ugly 357 goals against average and 890 save percentage on the season. The New York Islanders hosted the Minnesota Wild. They turned to Semyon Varlamov yet again. Uh, he was unable to continue his dazzling play. The Minnesota Wild won 4-2 as plus 100 underdogs on the road. The Wild were led by their third line, Joel Eriksson-Eck and Pat Maroon. Each had one goal and one assist. Marc-Andre Fleury got the start for the Wild and stopped 27 of 29 shots for the win. It's now 3-2-1 with a 269 goals against average and 899 save percentage on the season. He'll continue to see solid usage while Philip Gustafson has been struggling. So Fleury, if he's available on your wire, definitely worth a pickup at the moment. Noah Dobson's breakout season continued as he has yet to hit a snag. He scored for a second straight game and is now tied for third among defensemen in goals with four and sixth in points with 11 on the year. The Winnipeg Jets were in St. Louis. They were minus 147 road underdogs and won five to two. Winnipeg won, had a massive evening. Kyle Connor, two goals, one assist, six shots on goal. Alex Iafalo, four assists. And Mark Shifley, one goal, two assists, three shots on goal in the win. Josh Morrissey also added two assists on the back end as he's quietly up to 10 points in 12 games. Cole Perfetti is also heating up. He's now riding a four-game point streak after scoring in St. Louis. He has one goal, four assists, five points during that stretch. At just 4% owned, he is a dynasty and keeper league waiver wire target for me at the moment. 
Really not much to get excited about in St. Louis. Their offense will be among the league's worst throughout the season, I imagine. But Robert Thomas at 25% owned is definitely an attractive waiver wire target at the moment. As we've said before, he plays absolutely massive minutes atop the Blues lineup. He's currently averaging over 20 minutes per night. He has goals in four straight games and has 10 points, five goals, five assists in 11 games so far this season. The Calgary Flames, minus 120 home favorites against the Nashville Predators, 1-4-2. to two. Soros did his best to uh, steal this game, stopping 35 of 38 shots in the loss. Nashville eventually, uh, they got out to an early 2-0 lead, but the Flames eventually came back as they kept plugging away until they finally solved UC Soros. Nazem Kadri finally showing signs of life. He had a goal and assist and an impressive eight shots on goal last night. However, Jonathan Huberdeau continues to... Uh, not show signs of life. He did not register a point or a shot and was actually benched for the entire third period. So bad going to worse here for Jonathan Huberto in Calgary. Uh, but a bright spot, Connor Zari, uh, 1% owned, looks like a player who's certainly going to stick with the Flames. He's got a point in all three games so far since being called up from the AHL, played in a season high 1856 time on ice on Tuesday as well. The 2020 number 24 overall pick had 22 goals, 46 assists for 68 points in his last 78 AHL games over the last two seasons. So definitely a player that can produce, uh, has done it at all levels for me. He's definitely a dynasty league pickup at the moment. Mar Jacob Marshall was not busy, but did enough to earn his second win of the season, stopping 16 of 18 shots. The Arizona Coyotes hosted the Seattle Kraken, pulled out a 4-3 shootout win as minus 107 home favorites. The Coyotes continue to play well. The win moves them to 5-3-1 in their last nine games, and their top six is definitely heating up. Clayton Keller had one goal, one assist, and now has 11 points in 12 games. Nick Schmaltz had two assists and is back at a point per game with 12 points in 12 games. Somehow, just 36% owned. I swear that Nick Schmaltz must only be owned by DFO Fantasy Podcast listeners because we talk about him on every single episode and say that he must be picked up and his own percentage never seems to go up. So if you already own him, good for you. If you don't, be sure to check out the waiver wire and see if he's available. Barrett Hayton finally broke through with his first goal and point of the season. Keep an eye on him. Uh, hopefully this is the opening of the floodgates for Barrett Hayton. The way Nick Schmaltz and Clayton Keller have played so far, you know, Hayton is attached to their hip. If, if they're popping off, there's really no reason. It's just been bad luck for Hayton so far. So keep an eye on him if he's available on your wire. I think this could be a uh, start of things to come for Hayton. Matias Michelli is currently just 7% owned and is on a nine game point streak, two goals, eight assists, 10 points during that time. He's not going to score you a ton of goals, but at least his shot volume has increased from last year. So that's a good sign. And Connor Ingram has been terrific for the Arizona Coyotes. Won his third straight game last night. He's posted a 195 goals against average and 939 save percentage in the process. Matty Beneers had two assists, so maybe he's starting to heat up. He remains a great buy low in keeper and dynasty formats for us, as we mentioned last week. Uh, Jaden Schwartz scored yet again. He's on a seven-game point streak. He has nine points during that time, four goals, five assists, and 22 shots on goal. Be sure to scoop him up at 32% owned. He's currently tied uh, for third in the NHL with four power play goals. The Anaheim Ducks hosted the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Penguins as minus 179 road favorites pulled out a 2-0 shutout win. The Penguins were, uh, they, they stopped the Ducks' six-game winning streak with a combined 32-save shutout between Tristan Jari and Magnus Helberg. Jari left the game after a collision with Adam Henrique. He stopped the first 21 shots that he faced. And then you had uh, Magnus Helberg come in and close the door. Helberg would be their de facto number one overall goalie uh, if Tristan Jari is going to miss any time. Allison Delkovich remains sidelined. So Helberg looks like he could be somebody worth targeting on the waiver wire if Jari is going to miss any time. The Penguins did not provide an update on his status post game. said he was still being evaluated. So expect some uh, information on Jari's availability in the coming days. Eric Carlson is turning a corner. He had an assist and five shots on goal, giving him five points in his last three games and nine points in 11 games this season. Talked about him a couple of times in recent episodes as a buy low target. Hopefully you pulled the trigger on that because those windows seem to be closing. Despite the loss, John Gibson was absolutely terrific yet again. He stopped 34 of 35 shots. Uh, the Ducks metrics suggest that they're probably a little bit fraudulent. Obviously, a bunch of come from behind wins so far. Um, so I, I'm not a huge believer in the Ducks and, and Gibson moving forward. It's been a really good story to start the season, but the metrics suggest it's probably going to catch up to them. Uh, but I do think that Gibson is a solid play in good matchups. He's now posted a 930 save percentage in his last five starts. 
A couple more games to talk about here. We've got the Colorado Avalanche, who are minus 177 home favorites against the New Jersey Devils and 1-6-3. to three. The top dogs did their job for the Colorado Avalanche in this one. Nico Ranton in two goals and one assist, five shots. Nathan McKinnon, one goal, one assist, and three shots. And then Kale McCarr, three helpers, and two shots on goal. Ryan Johansson snapped a four-game pointless streak with a goal. He has five goals and 31 shots in 11 games this season and remains a waiver wire target for me while he continues to skate on that Avalanche top power play unit. And his shot volume has been outstanding, much better than in recent years. So I like Ryan Johansson at the moment. Uh, Dougie Hamilton continues to produce... I mean, hasn't really seen a lot of time with that top power play unit. They've kind of gone with a 1A, 1B situation, but he's hasn't mattered. Has not mattered for this man whatsoever. One goal, one assist last night, uh, 10 points in 12 games so far this season. And then even without Jack Hughes, Tyler Toffoli just keeps on scoring goals. Uh, eight goals and five assists, 13 points in 12 games so far this season. And lastly, the San Jose Sharks finally won a game. They were minus 186 home underdogs, sorry, plus 186 home underdogs against the Philadelphia Flyers. It certainly wasn't a piece of uh, art. They only had 19 shots on goal, but it doesn't matter. They're on the board. I actually mentioned on my DFO DFS report, uh, which I do daily Monday through Friday. If you play DFS, be sure to check it out. Uh, that I had a feeling that the Sharks were going to pull out the win last night, and they did. I wanted them to be around plus 200 if I was going to bet them. So at plus 186, I didn't end up getting any money down. Just didn't think the line was there, but they they were great. Um, I shouldn't say they were great, but they did enough to win the game. Mackenzie Blackwood was definitely great. The only notable performance from the Sharks side, stopping 38 of 39 shots in the win. Must have felt good after getting absolutely shelled in his previous outings. Uh, the good feels may not linger long, though, for the San Jose Sharks as they get set to face off a pissed off Edmonton team on Thursday and then they're in Vegas the following night on Friday so tough uh stretch here for the Sharks coming up Joel Faraby was the lone goal scorer for the Philadelphia Flyers he had five shots on goal uh, but Travis Sanheim remains the strongest waiver wire option on the blue line for the Flyers at the moment he had one goal or sorry one assist and four shots on goal in a ridiculous 27 minutes and eight seconds time on ice. He now has 11 points in 13 games this season and is third in the NHL in average time on ice, playing close to 26 minutes a night. Currently tied for sixth among D-men in points, but is somehow just 52% owned. So I absolutely love getting Travis Sanheim off the wire. I think he's about 52% owned at the moment. So not readily available, but certainly out there in almost half of leagues. All right, let's turn our focus to tonight's action where we have three games. We'll start with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Ottawa Senators. The Maple Leafs are minus 160 home favorites. I do have a lean towards the Leafs there. I don't mind them uh, at minus 160. They'd be worth a small play there. Um, my one bet in this game is Josh Norris of the Ottawa Senators over two and a half shots on goal at plus 125. Norris has hit this prop in four of seven games so far for 57.1%. Uh, Mark, he's averaging three shots on goal per game. And tonight faces a Maple Leafs team that is in the middle of pack in shots against. Currently giving up 30.5 shots against per 60. And the increased usage for Norris since he was moved to the top line with Brady Kachuk uh, is definitely helping his case tonight. He played a season high 19 minutes and 45 seconds versus the Kings on Saturday. At plus 125, I think Norris is strong value to hit the over two and a half shots tonight. My shot prop model suggests uh, that he is a minus 137 to hit this mark. The Washington Capitals host the Florida Panthers at minus 139. The Florida Panthers are road favorites. Uh, again, not a huge play here for me. I think I lean Florida at minus 139 and a small play there. My big play would be Matthew Kachuk over three and a half shots on goal at minus 118. Kachuk has hit the over in seven of 11 games for a 63.6% clip so far this season and is averaging an impressive 4.9 shots per game so far. The Capitals have been a little bit stingy um, in terms of giving up shots, giving up the 10th fewest shots against at 29.4, but Kachuk's usage almost 20 minutes a night gives him the chance to hit this over regardless of the matchup. He's also averaging 8.4 shot attempts per game, which puts him on pace for six 186 shot attempts over an 82 game season, which would absolutely obliterate his previous career high of 536. So on pace for 150 more shot attempts than his previous career high, which came last season. I have him at minus 192 uh, to hit the over tonight. So obviously at minus 118, really, really like Matt Kachuk. And then finally, you got the Golden Knights hosting the LA Kings. The Golden Knights are minus 123. The Kings are plus 110. 
I like the Kings on the money line at plus 110. The market seems to be slow to react to just how good this Kings team is. And I'm happy to bet them whenever they're underdogs because they've really just played as one of the top teams in the NHL thus far. They're absolutely dominant. And their main question entering the season was goaltending. And Cam Talbot has absolutely answered the bell and then some. He's 6 2 and one with a 214 goals against average, which is eighth best in the NHL, and a 923 save percentage, which is tied for 11th. So, uh, I really like the Kings whenever they're going to be dogs. Uh, there's probably some regression setting in here for the Golden Knights. I, you know, both of these teams are, are shooting at a very high clip right now. So both probably headed for a little bit of a regression. But like I said, whenever the Kings are dogs right now, the way that they've they've played, I'll absolutely be in on them. The Kings also were two and two in four games versus the Golden Knights last year, including a 5-1 win in Vegas. I don't put a lot of stock in last season's performances, but uh, it is worth noting they're certainly capable of going into Vegas and beating them so anyways that is going to do it for the dfo fantasy podcast morning report for wednesday november 8th just remember the dfo fantasy podcast is presented to you by betway if you're going to place a bet bet on betway must be ontario only 19 years of age or older thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you back here with our flagship show released thursday morning until then good luck